Right. Today, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, QA part because uh, this is all about uh, quality and list. As like as there are different different roles we have like one is business analyst where business analysts are the people who will be focused more on the business requirements part means whatever the business requirements we will be uh, gathering from the customer and all that so we provide solutions for that but at the same time there will be any, there will be another role which normally we call it as quality analysts because before we are getting into the quality analyst role and as less what exactly quality analysis people should understand the difference between testing and quality because most of the people have some misconception over i am not generalizing this for everyone but most of the people will have a confusion over testing and quality because uh, usually we we consider testing and quality quality and testing but there is a line of difference between these two things so as I'm asking out of uh, understanding, like from all you guys, can anyone differentiate? Can anyone differentiate? If you have an idea, can anyone differentiate? What's the difference between quality and testing? What was that? What exactly quality and testing differs? And how is it differs? Anyone please. So how quality and testing are different because there is a line of difference between testing and quality. So what was that? See, there are two things. Let me explain you. So quality testing are one are interconnected. But the major difference you see is testing represents you the procedure. I'll write down here. First of all, we need to understand the difference between quality versus testing. Okay, so what exactly the difference between quality and testing are? Normally, quality represents you the standard, whereas testing represents you the procedure. Testing represents you the procedure. Because if you have seen the software testing life cycle, as I stated earlier, whenever there is a piece of code developed by the development team, that has to be tested because we have to do multiple levels of testing we have. Of course, I'll be discussing those in coming days. There are different levels of testing which normally we will be having. So testing is a procedure because means if you have written a code, whether to what extent the quality of code written by the development team. So that will be tested using different, different tools. Like we have different tools, like normally this testing will be categorized into two different areas. One is about manual testing part and second is automation testing. So manual testing means whatever uh, the manual operations by creating some test cases, test plans, test scripts, test case documents, right? So all these things are comes under the manual testing part. Whereas when it comes to automation testing, wherein we use different, different tools, something like Selenium, Silk Windrunner, or load runner, all these things will be used by us. So using these uh, tools, whatever the testing we do, everything will be relevant to it. Right? So this is where generally the difference we need to see in reference to the testing part, right? So differences, right? So manual testing, majorly focusing on documentation kind of. As far as 
Automation testing majorly focusing on tools. We have different tools like Selenium, all that. So Silk Render Runner, Load Runner, all that. So different tools will be used to do the quality, whether the code was quality or not, right? So so that we identify any bugs, we will be performing accordingly. This is where generally the testing stands for. So testing is a kind of activity which is a regular procedure, irrespective of the project we are working on irrespective of the quality what is that we usually follow testing is a procedure on itself testing is a procedure it's a procedure which normally will be continued so no matter what technology are we using no matter which domain are we working on it is nothing to do with domain underline this point it is to do with the quality of code which was written by development team either it is in on java or cc plus plus python right so of anything right so kotlin so whatever the programming language whatever the piece of code it's not only code of course even whatever the user interface designs they prepare so everything has to be tested so this is a procedure which has to be followed to see whether the activity which was performed by the team was quality uh, was uh, was right or not now second we talk about quality what is quality represents quality represents you the standard policy procedure because organizations to organizations whatever the standards they were expecting us to perform an activity will vary an example i can give you of course we don't discuss detail about isco cmm level standards but i'm just giving an example to you so like, for example, there is an organization which is a CMM level company or ISO level organization. Whatever the procedure they were following to manage their business activities are something based upon the guidelines of the CMM standards because CMM will have some standards which people normally follow, right? So you don't require anything else apart, right? So there is a standard procedure which people follow, which we have to be continued further. So this is where generally we call it as standard come into picture. So standard give you a sense of understanding over the quality of the work. What is that we need to perform? This is where generally quality represents. So quality represents you the standard, whereas testing represents you the procedure. So the line of difference between these two is this. Again, there are two things. Again, quality analysis and quality assurance, all that, right? So again, that, that I'll discuss it later, right? So this is where before we are getting into quality analysis, most of the people who ever have some misconception over due to ignorance, this is what the difference are, right? So quality represents you the standard. So testing represents you the procedure. Now, here is a question to you, because most of the people who are getting into quality analyst role, most of the people will have a question over here. So what usually a quality analyst has to be taken care of and what sort of responsibilities being a quality analyst I have to do, right? So what is that we do? So being a quality analyst, our major responsibility is to understand the kind of components which are involved in any of the product or a project. Because <clears throat> there are two things. One is project, second is a product. Because there is a line of difference between project to product here. Because product is a concept which there is no customer as such. But whereas when it comes to the product, it is a difference. So here you can see there is a difference which I am showing you here. Let's see, this is where generally the difference you can see between product to project. Here you can see, first of all, we need to understand how product and what project was. Project, nothing but services, I can say, right? So services kind of. What is difference between product and project? Product is a permanent structure where we are developing it from the scratch. Let's say VR belongs to 
banking sector assume that we had experience in the field of banking domain that domain is what we are experienced for example now banking services what banking services meant for banking services are the one which will be used to manage banking operations because they take deposits from the customers against to that they will provide some interest out of it they provide loans to the people at the same time uh, whatever the portfolio management services and all if there are anything to be added to their existing service lines they will be added that they do stock trading uh, like uh, preparing some giving some uh, uh, creating some accounts relating to stock trading right so these are all the services which are comes into banking and financial services now <clears throat> we are the one who is having experience in the field of banking and financial services and we have identified there are a lot of applications used in the bank like say for example core banking is an application which will be used to manage back end operations of the bank next online banking application will be used by their customers banking customers bank customers to manage their uh, banking transactions online at the same time uh, when you see uh, what we call uh, when you see uh, uh, payroll management system payroll management system will be used to manage the employees uh, log details right so their salaries etc all that there will be an crm application which manages customer relationships understanding about perception of the customer expectations demands all that right so these are the concepts now these are the applications now assume that we had we have identified because as in when we are in the field of product development we have identified there is an immense potentiality of developing a banking product which is something essentially important for a banking and uh, banking people because we have identified there is some gap analysis in between as what they have and what they are expecting there is a line of gap you have identified so that you are coming up with some product which is a permanent thing right so you are developing it from the beginning right from the scratch this is where product stands for the example i can give you oracle Oracle Corporation have a product called Oracle Database. Have we ever seen Oracle product was developed for a particular customer? No, because Oracle is a database by itself, which was developed. And this product, this Oracle Database can be taken by any customer, even by an individual or an organization, they can buy licenses. At the same time, Microsoft, you can take the best example. Microsoft has a product called operating system, OS. Whoever wants operating system, they can buy, right? So Microsoft never developed operating system for a particular customer. So when you see a product into consideration, product is something that we are developing based upon the market requirements, market understandings, needs of the customer by considering all these Usually we develop the product. This is where generally product-based organizations or product-based companies work. Second, project-based companies. Project-based companies means for a particular customer, we are developing the solution. Means let's say X is a banking customer. They have an existing application, which was a legacy application they are using for a very long time. Now they want to upgrade this application to the next level. For that, they require some technical people's support to perform that. So being a team, what is that we do? We try to understand the requirements of the customer by doing some as is and to be all that. And we come up with a solution to the customer. So whatever the solution are we doing, performing? This is something confined only for a particular client so that is not something general for anyone so the difference we need to understand from the product to project is this product is a permanent structure 
where we are developing a product and this product will be enhanced when and wherever it is needed. This is where permanent point is. The second, when you talk about project, it's a beginning and end date, right? So because there is a beginning and end date for that, because customer give us the requirements, that is where beginning. End date means whenever the project is developed, solution and we have delivered to the customer, there is an end date for that. But whereas for the product, it was not the case. Product was designed, product was developed, product was delivered, and it will be upgraded. Because day by day, by day whatever the changes happens in the industry, we will be adding to the existing ones and we are moving further. This is the difference. Next, second is long-lived features team, feature team. Means like the products, whatever usually we develop, these are for the long-term benefits and long-term commitments. This is not something designed for short-term related. Because what is short-term, what customer wants, if you deliver it, that itself is called short-term. But whereas when it comes to the product, it is not the case. It's a long-term kind of, right? So you for example, I bought a product. Let's say, for example, I have bought an operating system. Whenever I have taken licenses of OS system, as in when I am renewing it, if there are any new features which was added to the existing operating system, I can use it. I can make a use of it because I have the choice because I am a user. I have taken a user license where I'm using it. This is where generally it was. Now, the third one is adaptive planning, which is an iterative part. What is adaptive planning? Adaptive planning means by understanding the needs of the market, by understanding the needs of the customers, all that, we are trying to adopt something, whatever is required and all everything, we are adopting something. This is where generally adaptive planning comes into picture. Means we are adapting it, right? So we are trying to adapt the new situations and new scenarios and we are moving further, right? So because it depends on the market needs, demands, this is where we do. That's what generally adaptive planning stands for. But whereas when it comes to project, it's a pred predictive planning. What is predictive planning stands for? We can predict what customer wants because customer directly give us the requirements. Whereas, whereas when you're developing the product, it's not the case because there is no specific customer as such based on the market needs and understandings, we are developing the product so that we are not developing a product, something, anything as its own. But whereas project, Planning is not that. Predictive planning means you can understand what could be the possibility which customer is expecting us to deliver. So subsequently, we can develop it. This is where generally predictive planning come into picture. Next, continuous improvement. The difference in product is. What is meant by continuous improvement? Continuous improvement means, as I told you some time back, there is a product where you have continuous improvement of adding some new features and all by understanding the market needs and demands, all that. But when it comes to the project, it's a on one off delivery it means you have delivered what customer wants and you have created what customer wants and simply delivered it. That's it. If there is any other thing required for a customer, customer will come back. Next, product has a nature of evolving customer needs. That's what I said some time back. Depends on the customer needs, we are doing it. Project is completely depending on the project requirements. This is the next one. Next, product has investment delivery benefits, like because whatever KPIs will be having, right? So key performance indicators will be followed. Means whatever the investment deliverable benefits are we working on. This itself is a key performance indicator how product is successful. Because as long as we are people who are taking licenses of our product. So that itself means whatever the investment a customer is doing to buy our product itself is a key performance indicator of our success or a failure of our product. But when it comes to the project, it was not the case. Investment delivery scope means investments are being made by the customer based on the scope as well as the possibility. What is that they want to do? So now coming back to the point. So when being a quality analyst, what is that we have to do? Whatever the product or itself is a product. 
being a quality analyst major responsibility is to ensure that whatever the components we want to develop for any product or a project it's not only a product even a project even anyone anyone it can be because two services two right two kind of service companies organizations usually happens one is service based organizations as i told you one is project based second is a product based organization so being a quality analyst we are responsible for testing the components as well as overall functionality of a product or a project so for that quality analyst being a quality analyst we should have an understanding over the process of quality standards if any organization is following any quality standards and all that we have to be considered and we have to keep that into consideration this is point number 1 point number 2 the other point apart from this is that being a quality analyst we have to be focused more on the testing life cycle procedure because you know what software testing life cycle stands for i have already explained it earlier to you software testing life cycle okay. so we need to have being a quality analyst we should have a complete understanding over software testing life cycle followed by the responsibility over testing the components so that we see whether whatever the functionalities are we performing were effectively working or not because quality deliverables is what we have to be issued to the customer this is where generally quality analysis stands for it. now what a quality analyst do right so because this is the next thing the first one about quality analysis the second what quality analyst do because if you we being a quality analyst what is that are we going to do right so what are what are our roles and responsibilities role is about quality analyst and what must be our responsibilities the first responsibility is that staying attentive to the project development so even though you are working as a quality analyst as i mentioned earlier even we are the part of project development <laughs> we are a part of product development whenever we are part of development <clears throat> of any product or a project project or a product it's always important for us to have a knowledge over the project development means how project development will be taken place and what are the different different stages do we have in any project development this is where if you remember i told you earlier which is called sdlc which stands for sdlc what is meant by sdlc which stands for software development life cycle this is where we call it as software development life cycle means when you want to develop any product or a project there is some software development life cycle we follow but whereas the second one is stls this is called software testing life cycle this is what we call it as software testing life cycle software testing life cycle means whatever the testing of a particular uh, software are we working on this is where we call it a software testing life cycle stands for so software development life cycle as separate software testing life cycle as separate right these are the two major differences we have to see when we are understanding about the difference between sdlc to stlc this is where the major understanding is so if we being a quality analyst whenever we are working on any project or a product we have to be stay attentive towards the project development means what are the different different stages are there for any of the project right straight from analysis right so at the same time planning and design implementation testing deployment delivery right so these are all the different different project development procedures one must be good and one must be familiar with this is where generally quality analyst one of the key responsibility because whatever the testing part are we working on whatever the quality deliverables we are performing for any application to develop it's not only about the quality of code what a developer has written but it is equally important for us to understand what kind of quality components are we using to develop the product right from the requirements side because quality requirements has to be taken by the 
team because quality requirements means whatever is really needed so those requirements has to be taken and those requirements if you have implemented that should has a value that should has a that should have a value this is where generally project development is all about right so this is where generally being a quality analyst we need to have a knowledge over the project development next one reviewing the adherence to the product demands this is where generally we being a quality analyst we have to be focused more on right so we need to review means whatever the product or a project we are developing we need to review according to the needs and according to the expectations of the quality deliverables what is that we have to be performed means how best this can be done because when there is a customer who is running their business whatever the solution they were expecting us to develop must enhance the value deliverable of a product or or their services so there must be a constant review as well as the process of understanding the right needs of the customer which is essentially required this is where being a quality analyst whenever we are working on understanding over the review process followed by the kind of uh, uh, understanding not on the review uh, but also we need to ensure that whatever the quality deliverables which customer is expecting to what extent what product demands because product demands usually not we let's say for example you are developing a product product will demand this is what i want because it's not that we are demand we are identifying because product if you are developing a product product will tell you this is what is required this is what is that i want you to develop so whatever the product demands that has to be reviewed which must be a continuous process because this is not something uh, confined for a month or two or three or four right so because this is a continuous process because as i told you especially when you are talking about the product side but project side there is a limitation because when we are talking about project there is a limitation for that because we have identified the right instance of the requirements of the customer and we are delivering it and we are completing and delivering it <clears throat> our our responsibility ended there <clears throat> but whereas when it comes to the product it was not the case but when it comes to the product the product is demanding something which being a <clears throat> team we have to understand this is where generally we call it as product demand stands for so reviewing the adherence to the product demands is what something we need to understand something what we have to be focused more on. this is the second point the third point about satisfying the quality requirements because understanding and as well as satisfying the quality requirements is also one of the key element being a quality analyst we have to be focused because normally when there is an application development we do we don't develop all the requirements because whatever are really needed whatever are really required for a customer we develop only that we don't uh, uh, develop everything right so whatever is needed whatever is having with us right so we develop we don't develop everything right so there must be a quality deliverable which is always required quality implementation has is 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 must must be our highest priority so that whenever we are developing on application development whenever we are working on the product whatever are we going to develop it is always important for us to understand about what kind of quality requirements we have to be delivered those requirements should provide a business value for the customer because return of investment is the highest priority customer is investing some x amount of money so they expect some return of investment return of investment may not may not be a monetary benefit immediately but in terms of the quality services which they are giving customer to enhance their business operations and business activities is what quality stands for right so this is also one of the core responsibility being a quality analyst we have to be performed with next being a quality analyst we need to analyze and report the test results because as i told you there are different different stages in testing because you know as far as stlc itself is concerned i have explained you right right from requirement analysis 
test planning, right? So test design, test case development, doing some understanding, creating an environment for doing testing, right? So doing some smoke testing. Finally, whatever the tools we have selected, so we have to identify whether there are any bugs were identified or not. So that we have to do. So if we being a quality analyst, our major responsibility is to analyze and as well as report whatever the test results we do. This is where generally the one area which we have to be focused more is manual testing part because whatever the test results were identified, Let's say, for example, 1 plus 2 equal to 3, for example. So it's not 1 plus 2, adding of two numbers. Whatever the addition of two numbers, you have to get the result. 1 plus 2 equal to 3. It can be 1 plus 2 equal to 3 or it can be 500 plus 300. But end of the day, there is a logic which developer is writing, writing in such a way where there is a logic they are writing in a form of writing a program for adding two numbers. The two numbers may have a limitation in terms of the length sometimes, may not be having. So analyzing and reporting the test results is where generally which is something connected with the manual testing part. Because whenever we are working on the manual testing, manual operations and all that, this is where generally this test results and all everything were somewhere connected here, right? So because we need to connect these test results and all. So manual testing, because whatever the bugs we have identified, that has to be updated on the test case documentation. Again, that will be reviewed by the development team and that making changes subsequently, whatever is needed. <laughs> this is where generally the manual testing part happens. But whereas when it comes to the quality um, so, um, automation testing and all, there are different tools we use, like something like Selenium, as I told earlier, like Silk Run, Silk, etc. All that different different tools will be used, and whatever the tools are we using in regular intervals will vary from organization to organization. But mostly, a prominent tool in reference to the automation testing we use in regular intervals is called Selenium. Selenium is what generally we use it. Uh, Selenium tool is what we use majorly because most of the projects which are belongs to Java, Java related projects and all, majorly we uh, use uh, Selenium as a tool for automation testing by most of the test engineers, whoever is performing uh, testing activities uh, in the organization level. Normally we use Selenium is one, one kind. Of course, we have other tools like Appium, right? Silk Windrunner, Load Runner, right? So we have a lot of tools, right? but App Test Selenium is one of the effective and prominent tool we are using for a very long time. This is also one of the aspect we need to consider. This is where analyzing and reporting test results is what we do. So if we being a quality analyst, we have to have a knowledge over two things. One is about manual testing. Second one will be called as automation testing. So what manual testing? Manual testing focuses more on the manual process of the work. What is that we have to be performed? Means if you want to perform any testing for a particular code, which was done by the development team, make sure we need to <clears throat> prepare documentation for that, right? What must be the scenario? For that scenario, what are the different, different test cases we have to be tested? So for that, what kind of test case implementation strategy do we require to follow? Because for every uh, testing we have to prepare, there is a test strategy we have to do. Right? So we have to be performed. Test strategy documentation, we call it as. So manual testing is all something useful and connected with the documentation part. Majorly it used under the documentation. But here is a question. You can ask me one thing, Raj. When we follow the traditional practices of application development, like waterfall model, V model, we use documents like test cases, test plans, test scripts, right? So all these things were there. But when it comes to the Agile then, is it the same? No. In Agile, there is a tool called Jiffer. Jiffer, J-D-E-H-Y-R. Let me write down here. Let me write down. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> whenever we follow the traditional model, 
right? Something like a waterfall model, V model, etc. We prepare as far as manual testing is concerned. I'm talking about manual testing, okay? Is concerned. We prepare, we prepare, there are different, different templates are available as I've shown earlier also, test cases, test plan, right? So, etc. right? So, these are all the different, different manual testing documents we prepare because templates remain same and constant. Of course, we'll work on those, uh, we'll work on those uh, test case documents and all in coming time as I, as we did for uh, uh, BRDs related stuff, even, even for this also, we do the same, right? So test cases, test plans, etc. we do. But whereas when it comes to agile environment, for example, we are working on agile environment. My pro our project is working on agile. There is a tool called Jiffer, right? So this is a test management tool. This is a test management tool, except usually which can be connected with the Jira software because Jira is a software. What is that we use to write user stories, epics, tracking the progress of work for that purpose. Generally, we use a Jira tool as part of agile environment we are working. But when we are doing this from the testing perspective, if you are a quality analyst, if you are a testing individual, when you are want to perform this test management activities, all that, so there is a tool which normally in Jira is called Jiffer, J-D-P-H-V-R. So this is a Jiffer is a test management tool which, which can be connected with uh, connected with the Jira tool. So whatever the test cases and all everything, we can write there itself. So that you don't require to prepare documents and all everything as separate. Right? So this is all something I'm talking about from the manual point of view. Right? So manual testing point of view. Documents we prepare whenever we follow the, uh, whenever we follow the uh, traditional regular model. But whereas when you are following automation model, we use Jiffer, which is a test case management tool. Please rejoin again. Please rejoin again.